Why do Asians from Southern California have a superiority complex compared to other Asian Americans? Let's break it down. Yeah, this is going viral right now. Let's run the clip. I think a lot of SoCal Asians, especially from OC and LA, feel like they're like that Asian. Yes. That's crazy. I, I feel like SoCal Asians have the highest egos. Yeah, there is a part of me, like, if I meet Asians from these other random states right boom shout out to the 949 podcast <laughs> actually these tiktoks went so viral that they actually sparked a phd tier discussion on nbc news so tiktok is now sparking academic discussions the title goes asian americans on tiktok are calling out a socal asian superiority complex all right well david we used to live in socal we examined socal asians as part of our careers and part of our youtube channel as you guys may know so i feel like i'm here to give some reasons why i think that socal asians have a superiority complex even if they haven't explained it themselves this is what i think all right and then we're going to talk about whether we think it's right or wrong or who else is involved and you know to, shout out to norcal asians as well we're going to talk about that so yeah let's get into it please hit the like button subscribe turn on your notifications check out smala sauce at smala sauce.com um overall andrew point number one do you agree with this i would agree with this i would say that um Essentially, everybody sees this attitude, right? Obviously, in the 949 podcast, they're from SoCal themselves, they're saying it, but other people are seeing it, but it's like they're perceiving it differently, right? Like people in SoCal that are Asian American might be like, yeah, we have it because we're the best, but other people may feel some type of way about it. Yeah, and I also do think, uh, first of all, statistically, California has half of the Asian Americans of in America, California as a whole, right? Between NorCal, SoCal, there's just a lot of Asians out there. And I do think that, uh, first of all, everybody, I gotta be honest, everybody on this 949 podcast, I believe is Korean, right? So they're talking about, so I think Koreans even in SoCal might even be a next level because, oh! no, no, no. And, and I got Korean friends in SoCal, they're cool. I'm just saying that uh, we're gonna dive into the reasons why, but SoCal has all the Koreans outside of Korea. That's it. That's that's the homeland. That's right. the second homeland. That's the second Korea is in SoCal. So anyways, uh, my other reason why, and I'm going to give California Asians in general a little credit here, that California Asians, both NorCal and SoCal, uh, are kind of responsible for a lot of the Western Asian culture that got exported. Right now, whether it's... Well, the when you say Western Asian, Andrew, you got to clarify yourself. Are you referring to the AZN culture that started in the year like 1995. Yes, I'm talking about AZN culture. I'm talking about racer culture, the import tuner culture. I'm talking about dance crews. ABDC. I'm, ABDC, I'm talking about boba life, right? Even though boba's from Taiwan, the whole idea of boba life is really from SoCal uh, as you can see in right, our video. Because videos. a lot of Taiwanese moved to the yeah. OC in 626. Yeah, right? I mean, there's a lot of Asian tech founders from California, a lot of the famous ones. There's a lot of business people, a lot of Asian celebrities live or are from California, NorCal and SoCal alike. But more of the tech founders are in the Bay. Right, Very right. few tech founders in right. SoCal. I'm kind of clumping California Asians together on this point, all right? So yes, SoCal Asians have a superiority complex a little bit, but I think they're, to give them some credit, there is some reason for it. Right? Right. Um, moving on to number three, it says that California Asians tend to believe that they are the center of the universe. And there was a bunch of comments sort yeah. of like, I mean, it, it goes, it's sort of connected to point number yeah, two. It's connected to what I'm saying in point number two is that I think the difference, and we're just going to compare SoCal to New York Asians, for example. I think SoCal Asians tend to believe, like, yeah, like, we're the coolest Asians. Like, duh. Like, look at everything we got. Like, right. you're we're saying some we're sort living... of unshakable, unquestionable confidence. Yeah, we're living the best life. Like, no question. Like, if you like Asian stuff, California. And then I think a lot of the Asians in New York City are kind of like, hey, I know that Asians don't run New York, but I'm good in New York. I'm strong. I'm cool. And I hold it down for Asians out here representing Asians to the rest of the world in New York City because New York is much more diverse and it is more densely populated with a lot of different types of people. So I don't think Asians in the East Coast have any illusion that they're actually running the entire city but asians in the east coast do believe like yo i hold it down for asians in my own way and i'm representing but in socal i think it's easy for asians to be like yeah this is asia but, but that's because all the enclaves in socal tend to be clustered around other enclaves it's not like one enclave is right next to like six other enclaves it right. tends to be like san gabriel valley or oc there'll be like seven or eight 
Asian predominant cities clustered together. Yeah, I mean, if you talk about a place like Glendale or what people say about like the Armenian enclave in LA, it's right. like they might have a similar thinking, but the Asian enclaves in LA are just bigger. Right, and, and LA is actually sort of famous for this attitude. If you talk to Persians that are not from like Beverly Hills, they, they always like are like, oh, those Beverly Hills Persians, that's a different type yeah. of Persian. Or, you know, it, it's true for other groups as well. Right. Um, I'll say this. SoCal is the first place where I saw Asians have that attitude of almost like a Hindu Brahmin or like an Arab. You know how like unshakably confident sometimes you meet guys that mm -hmm. are from those groups? It's almost like you can't believe it. It's almost like you're, you're seeing a movie character. Right, right. Uh, point number four. I think that a lot of SoCal Asians... If they're rich, they're more business Asians, but a lot of rich NorCal Asians tend to be more STEM centric. Mm. And I think that that changes the vibe in each place. And this is like something that really goes overlooked. Right. Where did you get your money from? Old money from Asia, new money from America, STEM money, business connection, import, export money, all those kids and attitudes, they all like proliferate and extrapolate differently. Yeah, yeah, I would say, I mean, in the Bay Area, you kind of have a mix of street and geek Asians, a heavy mix because- Are you talking about East Bay is the streets and then, uh, you know, more like the tech zone, Silicon Valley is the geeks? Yeah, 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 typically, of course, you know, you got your Mountain View Asians and you got your San Ho Asians. No, you, you got, got Oakland Pilo, Asians. you got Pilo, and then you got Jensen Huang with NVIDIA. Yeah, yeah, so I think in the Bay, it's actually more mixed of those two cultures, but I think in LA, it's more entertainment-based, more import-export-based, uh, bling more, Empire. More Bling Empire. -y. Listen, Bling Empire didn't work as well in New York City, but it worked really well in LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, dude, a lot of people sleep on that. How you get your money and what worlds that puts you in is, is that is hyper overlooked. Point number five, Andrew. Um, some people are still arguing on Reddit, even on these posts, about whether AZN culture emanating from California is real Asian culture. So this is a diss on SoCal Asians. This guy's saying that what is AZN culture to me? I'm an immigrant. Like I'm born in Asia and I came here and like, no, I don't and identify. Then he moved out, I think Virginia or somewhere on the yeah. East coast. But they're like, I don't identify with this AZN culture. Like, what is this like race? Right. What stuff? is this ABG, ABB, like right. Boba pop Molly, go to EDC at the KTV culture. Right. Like so, so does it make sense? For a SoCal Asian to be like, oh yeah, look, we got all these cute ABGs out here. We're like the best Asians. And then the Asian from Asia is kind of like, yeah, I don't really see uh, what's so good about this. Like, what are you talking about? Interestingly enough though, in 2024, some of the youth Gen Z in Asia is starting to like AZN culture. It finally built that bridge over time. If it looks fun, it's fun. By the way, people guys, will come. I got to show you this, Andrew. There was beef between Asian Asians and AZN Asians from 20 years ago on Urban Dictionary, they were going back and forth. So it goes to show you, it is not a new debate. I think a lot of this, ultimately, this SoCal superiority complex stems from just feeling like a normal dominant person, almost feeling like an incumbent group. Whereas a lot of Asians that grow up in non-Asian areas, there is a little bit of insecurity or there is a little bit of like waffling in terms of like, we had a we went through like some really rocky boat rides with our own identity. Mm. I don't think that SoCal Asians or NorCal Asians, any sort of California Asians in general, need to go through those crazy rocky waters. Yeah, no, listen, again, the life in SoCal for all practical purposes on average is pretty nice. Like if you can survive out there, it's a nice life. So I think I can see why a lot of SoCal Asians are like, yo, we're the Asians living the best life and we're just dancing right. and, and singing. We're, and we're focusing on other things other than our own Asian-ness, right? Right, like we don't always have to be the Asian. Like we get to just be in our own world. And there's pros and cons to that. Again, I lived out there, bro. I'm I'm saying this as someone who has lived out there and you've lived but out there too. We were too. just it's in like, the 626 last week. Yeah, we were just, dude, This every time I go back to the 626, I'm not, I enjoy it. I enjoy it for the time that I'm there. Anyways, guys, let's get into the comments section, David. Uh, Somebody said that we think we're superior because we live in the motherland away from the motherland. That's funny. In yeah. a way, that there's some truth to that, by the way. The enclaves are so big in SoCal, and it is so close to Asia. It's literally a plane ride. Not two plane rides. It's one plane hey, ride. Andrew, it's across the Pacific to be specific. Right. You guys get that. Um, somebody said, uh, I didn't even watch the clip. We're better. And then, of course, it just turned into a lot of arguing in the comments section of the 949 podcast. People just saying, oh, yeah, everybody in California has a, a complex about this, not just the Asians. Like California Mexicans, Andrew, might think they're Mexicans from other parts of America as well. Mm. Is that interesting that yeah. just the L.A. area in general gives you that complex? Yeah, I do think 
not to only blame Asians. I think it's everybody in LA might think they're better than their counterparts from other places. Wow. And I think in New York, a lot of people, they have their own cockiness and confidence going on in New York. I get that. But I think they all understand in New York, they're like, listen, whoever I think I am in New York, like there is always somebody bigger and better than me in New York City, but I know how to yeah, operate last, and I'm cool. The last person I hear everybody in New York always talking about just like running everything was 50 cent. Yeah, But I, I just think in New York, People th think of themselves a little bit more as an individual, like, oh, I'm good, but maybe other Asians aren't good out here. But in right. L.A., you just take on the L.A. Asian identity, and then you think you're cooler for that. Yeah, yeah, I think there's more suburbs clustered together. The entire geography and the whole city mapping is completely different. Like we said, New York, it was run by Bloomberg, Giuliani, and 50 Cent. Um, Pilo came through and said Bay Area Asians overall. Hey, I actually think that Pilo got a little bit of an argument, man. Like we said, it's a mixed place up there. I see a lot of militant Asians out there who are always, you know, fighting for Asians' rights. They're very activist-y. Also, you have a mixture of hood Asians. You got the geek Asians, the good Asians, everything. <laughs> everything in between in the Bay Area. It's true. The structures are different, for sure. Yeah. The setup is different. Somebody said, uh, OC Asians are different from LA Asians. And then, of course, this turned into a more arguing in the comments section. Like I said, Instagram, full of the lame uh, Reddit and Quora tend to be more of the geeks that want to discuss things academically. Um, this guy said, well, you know, I think NorCal Asians are better because we're socialized with other races and cultures and classes where we come across as regular people. So even if, if some of us are rich or upper middle class families, we don't show it. A SoCal Asian fired back and said, how insecure do you have to be to hang out with every single race to prove that you're multi multicultural? Nobody cares about your opinions, bro. No, it's not going to get you anywhere in life just focusing on being diverse. Yeah. Yo, that was That's it. funny. Well, it's funny. Listen, guys. So basically, this argument is about just like, what is... Like, is it about your own life and what you have and are you balling and are you rich and are you fly? Or is it about like just diversity for diversity's sake? Or is it about how strong you are individually? Obviously, Asians from like rougher urban areas probably you would say are tougher in many ways, but does that make them better? No, they're probably worse at navigating advanced monetary systems. Yeah, and what does it mean to be better? Oh, you just live a better life? You're just like a little bit more comfortable with yourself? I agree. I think SoCal Asians are a lot more comfortable with themselves. No, I, I think SoCal Asians, for example, I have people that are in my extended family where they don't have friends of other races, but it doesn't bother them at all. Yeah, they don't feel left out of anything. Yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, they're probably missing out not being friends with me, which is in a way closed-minded, but in a way you, in a business sense, you want that peace with yourself, to be honest. Um, somebody said Texas Asians has joined the chat, and someone said, yep, Texas Asians always drive pickup trucks, own guns, and are either a veteran or work in farm tech that's actually super funny. Um, and then, of course, everybody else came in with their hot takes about, like, I lived in SoCal. I thought the fobs were actually cooler than the ABCs. The ABCs were really closed off and clicky, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, I'll say this. Different regions are completely different. I think that goes without saying. If you're raised in the Pacific Northwest, if you're raised in the NorCal, SoCal, East Coast, West Coast, South Coast, Midwest, your experience will be completely different. Um because it's your fishbowl. And then I also think that if you look at most Asians in Hollywood, they're generally not from enclaves though. Mm. Because I think what would motivate you to navigate systems that aren't native to an enclave would be, I guess, having that coaching from a very young age. Right, right. Uh, somebody's calling us, but let's just wrap up this video real quick. Um, overall, I think that it's okay that SoCal Asians generally live a better life. Right. And they feel more comfortable and they have these bigger enclaves where they almost don't even feel Asian anymore. Like I, I met so many SoCal Asians that were like, yeah, man, when I went to school in Boston, that's when I learned I was Asian. Right. I went to Georgetown. or something. <laughs> yeah. Like that. I went to college and I learned that I was finally Asian. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but it just depends on what you value. You know, I think uh, New York Asians are generally more intellectual. I'll say this. I'll stand on this. I'll die on this. That New York Asians are pretty smart. They're pretty intellectual. They're well, this pretty... is considered like the brain hub of the world. Yeah. They're go-getters. They hustle hard. Everybody here works very hard. But yeah, dude, SoCal Asians. They having all the fun. NorCal Asians, they also having a lot of fun too. SoCal is more fun than NorCal. No. SoCal, SoCal is more fun than NorCal. SoCal Asians are having the most fun. 
of them all. Yeah. Let me be real. Listen, guys, there's just pros and cons of every fishbowl you want to inhabit. We happen to be from Seattle. It's a hyper neutral place. There's no local accent. There's no local food. There's no local anything. People from Seattle are a collection of people from all across the world. So I've lived in NorCal. I've lived in SoCal. I've been to Texas numerous times. I've lived in New York. Every place just got pros and cons. Ultimately, you just got to find the fishbowl that's right for you. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Why do SoCal Asians think they're better? Is it legitimately better? Where would you put your money? Where would you raise your family if you had to pick right now all over again? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time with the Hot Pot Boys, we out. Peace. Peace.